welcome back to Remote Sensing Applications using ArcGIS. This week we'll do something called supervised classification. And that's the process of using sample polygons from known cover types. And then, based on those sample polygons, extract the statistics from your remotely sensed image within each polygon. And then go to your remotely sensed image, and for every pixel in the image, predict the cover type based on the spectral statistics. So that's basically the strategy behind supervised classification, and it's used typically to produce land cover maps. We'll use something called a maximum likelihood classifier to predict the cover type of every pixel in our image based on the trending polygon statistics. So the idea behind the maximum likelihood classifier is we assume a bell shape or normal distribution from every training polygon. So for example, this is the distribution of likelihood for our first polygon, and it peaks at a mean of 20. So the maximum likelihood that a pixel would belong to this polygon would be if that pixel had a value of 20 as opposed to this one has a maximum likelihood at a value of 30. So basically we're going to use that maximum likelihood classifier to predict what the likelihood is for every pixel and then assign the pixel would it belong to this class or would it belong to this training polygon class. Okay so we'll start with a test single band raster and we know the exact distribution of pixel values within this area. So here we've got pixel values that are normally distributed and they peak at a value of 20. In this area we have pixel values that are normally or bell shaped distributed and they peak at a value of 30. And then we'll use ArcGIS to go through the mechanics of doing the supervised classification. Next we'll do a real-life application using an uh, image from last summer, actually last fall, September 15th. And this is a Landsat 8 sensor image. So this is the town of North Pole, the Richardson Highway going from Fairbanks to Delta, Ileson Air Force Base, the Tanana River, etc. So what we're going to do is we're going to use training polygons. And here are our training polygons. So for example, Here's a training polygon that's in the middle of the Tanana River and it represents uh, turbid water. And here's a training polygon in a black spruce stand and it represents a spruce cover type. So basically we'll have training polygons for six cover types. And then we'll extract the pixel values inside each training polygon. So for example, here we have our four band Landsat 8 sensor image and we've got 18 training polygons we've got four spectral bands that we're looking at and our first training polygon had an ID of 10 and there were 92 pixels inside that first training polygon and here are the mean values for band 1, 2, and 3, and 4 okay in our example band 1 will be from the green spectral region band 2 will be from the red spectral region Band 3 will be from the near infrared spectral region, and band 4 will be from the short wave infrared spectral region. So we've got the mean values inside each training polygon, and then also how variable those pixel values are inside each training polygon. Okay, so once we have the spectral statistics inside each training polygon, we use the maximum likelihood classifier to predict for every pixel which training polygon is that pixel most likely to have come from or in other words for each pixel which training polygon is that pixel values most similar to in terms of comparing it to all our training polygon spectral statistics so the result is what's called a classified image where we've got now within each pixel the training polygon the pixel is most likely to have come from or most similar to and we color code our classified image. So in this example we've got this is a shrub training polygon and everything in this color is predicted to be shrub as opposed to everything in this color is predicted to be clear water 
everything in this color is predicted to be turbid water. Okay, next we're going to use ground truth points to assess the accuracy of our supervised classification. So for example, these are ground truth points that represent unvegetated ground truth locations. And these are locations that represent turbid water. And what we could do is look at our original image and visually, yes, that's unvegetated, yes, that's unvegetated, yes, that's unvegetated. They're all alluvial gravel bars. So for those three points, we were correct that yes, those were correctly classified as being unvegetated. Likewise, we could say, okay, here's a prediction of turbid water, here's a prediction of turbid water, look at our original image, and yes, they are in the Tanana River, which is turbid water. But that's not a very efficient way to do an accuracy assessment. So what we'll do is an automated accuracy assessment by comparing the pixel values that each of these point is sitting in, in terms of our classified raster, comparing those values with the actual ground truth values. And ultimately, we'll have something called an error matrix, where we have, as the columns are ground truth, so for example, class number one was turbid water, and there were 10 out of 10 ground truth points that were correctly predicted to be one or turbid water. Class number two is clear water, and there was nine out of 10 points that were ground truth points that were correctly predicted to be clear water. There was one point that was incorrectly predicted to be class six, which in our classification scheme is unvegetated. And class three is broadleaf vegetation. 10 out of 10 ground truth locations that were broadleaf were correctly predicted to be class three or broadleaf. Class four, spruce vegetation. 10 out of the 10 ground truth points were cor correctly to, predicted to, to be class four. Class five is shrub. Nine out of 10 were correctly predicted. One was incorrectly predicted to be class six, which is barren. And then our barren ground truth points, 10 out of 10 were correctly predicted. So this is something called an error matrix, and it's used to assess the classification accuracy of any classification. Okay, so if you go to the Blackboard website, you'll get a link to the first video session for this week.